I'm uh, Dan McCown, I'm the executive chef at Bloom at Conestoga College in Waterloo. Welcome here on this beautiful Friday. Today we're going to be cooking um, a Atlantic salmon filet with a salsa verde, some confit fingerling potatoes and some nice French beans. Salmon will be a very popular item around in Bloom. Uh, when we build our menu in Bloom, what we do is not just from the top down, like every restaurant or anywhere, you're sort of building these menus seasonally or you know what you kind of want to showcase. What we do here is because it's the college and it's the full circle kind of system, is what we'll do is sort of pan out how the semester's looking, how our butchery classes are work, uh, working, and how every thing is gonna sort of be trickling down. So salmon is always very popular because the, the students in butchery class do get to fillet salmon, they fillet trout, they do a uh, halibut. So we wanna make sure that there's an outlet for us to use all that because you know we do get a lot of that product coming down from other rooms in the college. So what we're doing here with this one is this is gonna be pan seared. I'm just gonna start this by seasoning it with a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. And we're gonna sear this skin side down. So I always like to kind of sear your presentation side first. Get a nice liberal bit of kosher salt there. A Little bit of black pepper. Okay, we're gonna make sure we get that nice and coated there. Okay, so we're gonna get a cast iron pan here. Get that nice and hot. Not, we don't wanna get it too, too hot, but what we're going for here is we wanna make sure that that skin gets nice and crispy. That's our main focus. And then we're gonna finish this in the oven to make sure that we've got our salmon to a nice sort of medium well, medium, medium well, uh, depending on, you know, the thickness, depending on, you know, the size that it, that's gonna de determine how long it's gonna take. Um, but, and also some guests, you know, will request well done fish, um, wouldn't be my recommendation. So that sizzle you're hearing in the pan, that's exactly what we're looking for. We wanna get a little bit of action in that pan to start off. If you put that in a cold pan, what you're gonna have is a little bit of, uh, you might get some sticking. As soon as I know that that's gonna be in there and moving around like that, you can see it'll slide easily in the pan. You know, that's gonna be off to a good start. So this is one of those things, you know, when we're talking to students, it's always like, you always have to exercise patience, right? So obviously, over time and over your experience, you get a lot better at kind of looking for your indicators. But what you wanna see is sort of that edges here starting to cook, you know, the sort of building back, you'll see that sort of crisping around the outside there, but we don't want to do too, too, too much with it. Anyone who sort of like even barbecues at home, you know, there's always that temptation to keep flipping your steak, flipping your steak and keep it back and forth, but you're actually hurting more than you're helping because that nice caramelization of the sugars that are in the skin is really going to give you a lot of flavor. So if you keep moving that around, it's going to sort of like be too, too much. So getting some nice color there. So what I'm gonna do is just let that sort of finish up in the oven. Okay, the bottom of that skin will continue to cook and crisp on that pan. And in the meantime, while that's finishing there, we can build the rest of our dish. So what we also have here is a little bit of uh, confit fingerling potatoes. So what we do is we poach those in, uh, in a little bit of fat. Anything that's confit, it's just uh, you know, sort of poached in fat. You could use duck fat, you can use bacon fat, you can use a combination of oil or the two. Um, we've done a bit of a combination because like I was mentioning before with the butchery programs, we do do duck breasts up there, we do a whole ducks into duck breasts and legs, get a lot of fat, what we'll do is render that out, lots of nice flavor in there, and then we will um, add that a little bit of oil just to bump it up, and then we'll slow poach these potatoes in there with a little bit of herbs, build a little bit of flavor in there, and then just take them and then all they need to do is be crisped up in the pan. So put these all sort of like inside down. Done that on purpose, because what you'll do is you'll actually get a nice crisp, um, you know, coating to the, the skin side of the potatoes. And what we're trying to build is a nice texture there. So it's not just like a boiled potato or even just like a poached potato. Even a really good French fry, like what they do is you'll do a, a first poach where they do it like in like a low temperature oil to so make sure that, that the French fry is cooked really, really nice. And then you put them aside and then you'll fry them in a nice hot oil to crisp the outside, right? Sometimes they even do a triple blanch, um, but what we'll do here is this will get a nice bit of crispiness going. It won't take long in a nice hot pan. And then while that is going, I'm also going to do some um, green beans. So the green beans, what we do, I'm just going to put a little bit of butter in there and a little bit of minced shallots. So what we're doing here is just a little bit of uh, flavor building there. Um, 
You're not going to do it too much. Again, these beans have been blanched ahead of time, so we just want to reheat them, add a little bit of that nice onion and butter flavor to finish on our dish. These potatoes, you can see they got some nice caramelization on the inside. Just going to let those flip those and let those finish sort of on the back. Keep them nice and hot. Like I said the green beans can all go in the pan there. Green beans, one of my favorites. We always have such excellent produce in, uh, in Ontario. Um, nice and fresh. Something you don't really need to do too, too much to it. That's why I'm not adding a lot of spices, anything. It's literally just the beans blanched how they are. Little bit of the shallots will give a little bit of nice depth to that. And who doesn't like a little bit of butter on your vegetables? I'm just gonna check in on the salmon, see how that's doing. Just gonna give that a little touch. It needs a little bit of cooking, but that skin is nice and crisp. So I'm gonna flip that. Let that finish maybe one more minute in the oven before we sort of go to the plate with that. So in the meantime, I think we can start building our plate. Everything's nice and hot. I'm just gonna finish this with a little bit of seasoning as well. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'll add those there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with our green beans. Just a little pinch of salt. A little bit of pepper, have those there. So how we're gonna build this plate here, we have this salsa verde, which is um, essentially salsa verde can translate just into green sauce. There's many different variations you're gonna have of this. Sometimes it might just be almost like a herb pesto. Um, a lot of times you'll have a lot more depth to flavor. What we have in here is um, for a little bit of a flavor bomb, we have like uh, anchovies in there, capers, garlic, um, a mix of herbs, we have some mint in there, some parsley, some cilantro. You get a lot of really bold flavors, uh, some lemon juice, but it will all sort of come all together as a nice, just vibrant, fresh green um, sauce there. Goes really well with fish. Honestly, this would be really good on a steak, similar to like almost like a chimichurri, um, but more of a, like a, a soft puree. So that goes just down on the plate like that. I think my salmon is gonna be done. Right, so nice crisp skin, just a little um, under on the inside, nice medium to medium well as I was looking for. I don't want that to keep cooking, so as I'm plating, I'm just gonna pull that out, let that rest a little bit. So what I will do, I'm just gonna add a little pinch of fresh parsley into there. See, give it a little bit more freshness flavor. Just sort of build this up here, nice and crispy. that a nice little stack there give that a little bit of a home and these beans will sort of just arrange them try and build a nice little stack of these right so there nice little nest of the green beans and then to continue building this one we have a uh, lemon chive yogurt so this is gonna go right on top of these green beans, but as the whole dish comes together, it's gonna to really go well with those nice uh, crispy potatoes. Almost think like a nice fresh baked potato with sour cream and chives kind of idea. Uh, but for here, we're using um, some yogurt. So just one nice dollop right on top of there. And then we have some toasted almonds. We're also gonna add those right to the beans. Really great combo. I've done these like for like tapas menus where all you want to do is sort of one element and just the green beans with like some nice yogurt like that and some toasted almonds, maybe a fresh lemon. Delicious. You don't really need to overcomplicate it. That's plenty there. I'm going to do our nice salmon filet that we've built a nice home for there. And then just a little bit more fresh herbs on there and some of this preserved lemon that I tend to love. Gives it a nice little flavor bomb. And that is our salmon. I hope you enjoy it. Great to see you again. Hope to see you next week.